Hi fam, it's Miss B here. Just wanted to um, check in, say hello to everyone. And um, I just wanted to talk about uh, family heritage and uh, some of those, those um, activities that we missed. More specifically, the sewing and the quilting and things like that, that creativity. Um, what our people have had in them, and especially our women, we've always had the ability to be creative with what we have. And um, we're losing a lot of that. We still might be creative in uh, balancing a budget and making that money stretch, you know, turning that nickel into $5 in a week's time. But there are some other creative juices that, you know, we're kind of letting run stagnant, if you will. Um, so as a little girl, I remember growing up in New York and where we lived, it, it wasn't the greatest neighborhood. And so we, um, now building was before we, when we moved, the building was being, um, what you call it? Uh, not abandoned, but, um, it's considered, uh, unlivable, uninhabitable. And after that, there's a particular word and right for this moment, that word escapes me. But, and it was being taken over. The landlord was losing his ownership, his rights to it because he had not maintained it. And so we didn't have heat um, in the winter time. And, you know, we had to do the boiling the water to kind of heat up, uh, boiling the water to, to wash up and all that other kind of good stuff. But because it would be so cold in New York, we had, um, I remember having quilts. And these quilts were um, passed down through the generations, if I remember correctly, my mom said that they were made by her great-grandmother. So, well, some of them her grandmother and some her great-grandmother, which would be my great-grandmother and great-great-grandmother that made these quilts and passed them down. And, um, you know, I got the sewing. We all, every girl in my family, on my mother's side and my father's side we all had to learn to sew um most of us don't sew now we don't particularly enjoy it usually um but if it came down to it if, if we were in a situation stuff hit the fan and we didn't have any clothes but we had some fabric and a needle and thread we put it to work um i actually had to do that when i first was out on in my very first place um wind up getting some rinky dink uh, very cheap from the Goodwill furniture or dining room set, and, and I just needed to cover the chairs. Didn't have a lot of money, but I had enough to get some fabric, and I got a needle and thread and a thimble, and I literally refabric, recovered my dining room, my dinette set, uh, very limited budget, and then wound up having enough fabric, and before you know it, I covered my ironing board, and Next paper, went back and got some more and made some curtains to match it. My little kitchen was, was looking on point. Um, so we can't be creative. And, and I, I guess I'm thankful to my mother and grandmother and other grandmother and stepmom and everyone who sewed and who, you know, made sure I knew how to sew. But um, I wanted to focus on these quilts. These quilts are, I mean, it's just awesome. It's um, when you think of how much history, how much time is put into making these quilts. Um, the one that I have, I'm going to show to you. I'm gonna... Okay, so this is the quilt my stepmom made for me. Let's see if I can stand back and try to get the whole thing. I can't because my table's in the way and I kind of tried to put it and um I just leave it here so it doesn't stay packed up so much uh and then I take it down after a while but um as you can see here th there's a lot of stuff it goes back actually this one I started from my high school and this is my 20 year yeah my 20 year reunion shirt um but I took it from high school and I'm a product of the Hoa Avenue Boys and Girls Club. Uh, I'm also a product of the Spelman College. And then my Hotlander shirt, I tell everybody about how I got my first little Visa card and got on the Metro 
not Metro, Marta, the Marta bus and then rail to go all the way to Lenox Square Mall to buy a t-shirt so I could actually use my little Visa card. So that's what I bought with that card um, way back in 80 something. And then it just gives some more history and you can put in there whatever you want to put in there. I put in um, the things that, that uh, meant the most to me at the time it was done. Um, since we do have a, a, a Caribbean heritage, a West Indies, British West Indies heritage, I have here, um, there's actually two shirts there. One references, um, it says the BVI, and then there's the blue one there that says Tortola, the island itself. And that's where um, you see that uh, lavender with the black around it. My um, grandparents were from there. So, um, and that's pretty strong. And um, Jesus Christ, a uh, strong follower at the time, and I'm still a follower of the Messiah. Um, I'm at a point where I'm, I'm determining whether that is the correct name and if it's the correct person and that sort of thing. But, uh, and then Puerto Rico, I'm pretty strong on Puerto Rico, primarily because I'm from New York and New York, um, you know, there are a lot of Puerto Ricans in New York. My best friend was Puerto Rican. Actually, most of the people I hung out with uh, in my preteen and teen years are all Puerto Rican. And so um, I maintained pretty decent relationships with them, learned the language, the food, the customs, etc. And so Puerto Rico will always have a, a close place um, in my heart. Uh, and then actually my girls, when we went, we went. The, the last time we went was just before uh, the hurricanes um, destroyed the island. So I don't know what it looks like now, but um, I was able to take the girls and they were able to enjoy it. So, and then these two pink squares, I like to tell this story. I have twins and they were born prematurely. So um, when it came time for one of them to come home from the hospital, I hadn't even gotten the, the blanket for them to the stuff for them to come home so mama one of my moms because i've got a couple moms she had gone and she picked up their their outfit to come home from the hospital and, and she grabbed this blanket to wrap them up in and it was just the one that came that day and so she came home in that and then the other one she came home but a month or so almost some weeks later a little over a month later and so since they came at different times, there was no need to buy a second blanket. So I tell a story of how um, I took two pieces from the same blanket and added it in because at the time this was done, that's not to say that that's the end of my life, but those were the, the highlights, everything that was highlighted in my life up until my daughters. And of course there is um, Pigeon Creek, uh, community, the um, fall festival. We are big um, country folk at heart and, and that's a, a group that we have strong ties with back in the country and we go back um, annually for the horse show and rodeo and things like that and then it's just that's when we can let our hair down, get dirty. It's not about being cute at all. It's about jumping on the four wheelers. It's going mud riding. It's saddling up and riding. It's um, getting out in the field, eating fresh peaches off the tree, berries off the vine, all that other good stuff. Maybe, you know, grabbing a pole and grabbing some fresh brim for breakfast uh, so that we have strong ties to them. My kids actually were just saying yesterday, those that set of play parents is getting older and they just said, Mom, we've got to make sure we do whatever we got to do to to ensure when their time comes that their property stays within the family no matter what. So, um, just because of the memories there. And then St. Kitts again with the, um, the Caribbean heritage. If you don't know the history of St. Kitts, um, I recommend you look it up. There's some good stuff as far as um, U.S. and strategy and military and things like that. And uh, just so, but the point is this is creativity. This is taking our memories, taking my life, and putting it in a quilt. So when I leave here, when I transition, my kids, if they've forgotten a story that I told them, if they look at this quilt, they'll remember things that they can share with their children or grandchildren about me that they may have forgotten. 
or if I transition and they transition and it's passed down a couple generations, when they you put my quilt next to their quilts, um, our seed would be able to look at it and just kind of have some history about us. And this is something I recommend we all do. Um, my stepmom does this, and I've not confirmed with her recently, but I know at one point we talked about it. And she would be open to assisting people or even taking, you know, some small orders here and there. Um, she doesn't want to make a business out of it. She's retired and she's kind of enjoying her retirement. But if somebody's interested in having a quilt done, um, enter your information or, you know, just, just post in the comment section. And then I'll get in touch with you and um, make contact with her and, and, and kind of put you guys to where y'all are doing it. But I just wanted you to see that and just see the creativity. See what we took, some basic stuff, t-shirts I've been had for years and years and years. And this thing actually, um, like I said, it's hanging right now because I hang it for a while and then I fold it up and put it away. And then um, after a while, I'll pull it out and hey, let it hang and stuff and then fold it up and put it away. My ultimate intent uh, is to just permanently mount it on the proper uh um, the proper mount or curtain rod, if you will. I just um, actually I'm gonna do that when I move into when I transition to the next house, because I think this I need a higher ceiling for it to give the effect that I want it to have. But that's it for my quilt, and um, I'm gonna add, actually add another video on some other creative creative things that um, I've done, the girls have done, etc. Because again, we've got to get back to our creativity. We've got to get back to our um, the, those inner things that are in us that we've just been kind of kicking to the curb because we're busy chasing a dollar at somebody's job somewhere. Um, because it's in that inner creativity where we're going to find our abilities to branch out and do our own. So we don't have to slave for somebody's job. We can, you know, put in those 50 hours a week on our own jobs and our own companies and, 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 you know, just do for us. So, all right.